We found him. Willtown Bluff, the resting place of Thelonious Lamar Green for 36 days. Lamar, who was 54 at the time of his disappearance, left a graduation party near Penny Creek Landing around 9.30 p.m. to go home and eat dinner on June 4th. When the soup was still on the stove and his dad hadn't even heard from him, his family was on edge. Something was dreadfully wrong. Lamar would always stay in touch, especially with his father. His family reported him missing and the Charleston County Sheriff's Office began their procedures. They searched by land, air, and water until their options were exhausted and they had to rely on leads to develop to do more. Ethel contacted Chaos Divers on June 25th and within a few days we let her know we would be on our way in a little over a week. We gathered the rest of the information, addresses, habits, and medical information. Arriving in South Carolina on July 7th, our first area of concern was Penny Creek Landing, just yards from his last known location. All right, as you guys heard Lindsay talk about the case, we are searching for Lamar Green. The circumstances or his condition, Lindsay can talk about. Lamar had he had Alzheimer's. He had a traumatic brain injury several years ago, which caused early onset Alzheimer's. He was at a graduation party, everybody, family, friends, just hanging out. He did have a few drinks, so that in in conjunction with, with the Alzheimer's, we're kind of factoring in for the most part that it was an accident, uh, confusion, he got turned around. He was at a party down the road. His daughter actually lives between here and the party. And she actually went home to get her keys to follow him home. And by the time she had gotten down to her house, got her keys, he was gone. And nobody's seen or heard him, heard from him since. From where Lindsay was talking about, this road is a straight shot into this Penny Creek boat landing. I don't see it, but we're gonna search it. Because from the Google Earth, it looked like it was bigger. It may be deeper. We're going to check it. We're going to make sure there's absolutely nothing in here. It's going to be a spot we want to clear. There have been Vegas. other, yeah, they, there have been vehicles that we have been told have been pulled out of here. They did search, but from my understanding, they searched immediately after. And it's so much harder to find a vehicle hours, days, even a week after it goes in the water than and as time passes so because as you've seen with abigail brandenburg you're seeing flashes you're seeing an object you're seeing something that doesn't look like a vehicle but it's still a mass that needs to be checked out and uh we're going to search up and down this just just about less than a quarter mile up and a less than a quarter mile down due to the fact that this is not a raging river um, unless it was flooded which we did the research and we don't think it was flooded it's the day before or day after yeah. so we're just going to search this make sure there's nothing in here and then we have several other spots we're going to check today um it is like 6 30 in the evening you don't search after dark in the south don't do it and the reason why is alligators can actually see better in dark than they can during the day all right guys so we do have the sniper marine pole this allows us to get a 360 view on everything we have the apex um, we have the extra apex the sonar this way due to the fact that we do have the hummingbird helix 12 with a transducer on the back this isn't my boat this is kyle's boat so this is a kind of a temporary but has brought home what four people now oh kyle's boat five people five or six, six, six. with this this same thing that we use this is what we use on the boat so this setup has brought home 10 people let's get in the water
He's over here full wheel driving it. Good, good night. She does do an excellent job backing this up. All right, guys, we put in. Um, we was waiting on the apex to get started up. Right now, we're actually at seven feet of water. Well, we're at four foot now. We kind of went to the side a little bit. We're in four foot of water. Um, I let the boat set, and it actually started taking us downstream. So we're going to check out this area, go back and forth, make sure there's nothing in here. Lindsay will show you on her um, apex what it looks like after she gets her settings right. And that's one thing you gotta you gotta take into consideration and, and, and actually really concentrate on is getting your settings right because you can see shadows that you didn't see before. You gotta make sure that your your speed is set up right and make sure you do a thorough check. Each direction, back and forth, up and down. I guess I need my life vest on and I forgot. Only that wasn't an alligator that just went by. With a big Ford F-150, you're gonna see it. It's not just gonna look like a small little object. It's gonna be big. You're gonna see a big blur. That is one thing that you have to concentrate when you're when you're doing this sonar in is different types of land, different types of soil will show differently on the uh, on the sonar so you have to adapt your screen to that which I don't know why I'm going out this far because there's really no roads out here right all right we're on a log right now yeah I see it right That one is. This one. We're not gonna go any further up. There's no reason to. He couldn't he couldn't have taken this truck up there, right? Um, everything I can see, no. Yeah. Right, no way he could have got he couldn't have gotten through that marsh in that truck. Alright, go ahead. Yeah. What are you looking for, Lindsay? I thought that was an alligator for a second and I got super excited. <laughs> it was not though. We probably won't see any right now. <clears throat> I, I was doing this in the hopes that if he did go in here, that this truck floated down, yeah. if it was flooded. But I mean, it's not gonna make these harsh turns, I don't think. Uh, I mean, yeah. it could, everything's possible. I mean, it's 10 feet right here, so. I know there are parts of the Desto where you get like a longer straightaway. What do you got there? It is a car. How the hell does a car get back here? You can go back over it. That's weird though, how could a car get back here unless, again, it was flooded. It may be a boat, but it looks more, I mean, it looks just like a log, or a log. Like looks, a looks just like a car. We're gonna get the live scope fired up and, and, and just look at it. Um, it really does look like a car, so. I just don't see how a car could have gotten in here. Look at that right there. That right there. It's in 10 feet of water. You know what I'm saying? Look That's at yours. 10 to 20. And then look at mine. It's a car, isn't it? Yep. See the front end of it?
here's the mirror. It's a car. It's not a truck. All right, Lindsay, what did I do? <laughs> my father would be proud at, at your uh, MacGyver skills right there. Well, I mean, think about it. It'll save us time to dive because right now we are not, I mean, it's getting dark. And if we can get the license plate and the stuff off of this without me diving it, it's obviously going to be safer. Yeah, I don't have to get in the alligator infested waters. Oh, I just meant like solo diving. I don't worry about the alligators. Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, so I got my big blue dive light. Thank you, big blue. And I got the GoPro 10 strapped in there, ready to go. All right, so we're going to go under this eerie looking. It's kind of eerie right now, isn't it? Your dad would be mad at me right now. Yeah, he would. You're going to be in so much trouble. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, but my dad's going to be mad that you let a snake fall on me and bite me. Oh. He's not mad that, like, he knows that I can, I can defend myself. All right, so listen. We're going to drop the magnet back on it. And uh, in the same thing, I'm going to stick my arm down in there, and I'm going to try to get as much film as I can with this light. I think we'll need to actually put appendages in the water here. No, it's only like seven feet. It's only seven foot. And I mean, when you were when you were on what we think is the top of the car, we were what three, four feet deep. So yeah. I just I'll scan it, and then I'll scan the front, and I'll just go all yeah. the way around it. Jacob's trying to put me in the trees, Dad. I heard that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're on it. <laughs> More on it than ketchup and mustard on a hot dog. More on it than ketchup and mustard on a hot dog. Oh, I got it. And say so you should. All right, all right, all right. Make sure the seal is good on here. I'd hate to ruin the camera. It's right there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And yeah, you can actually see. Yep. Yep. Alright. Well. Okay. Wow. Look at how, you know, this is the good thing about, you know, all that dirt that I stirred up earlier? Yeah. That's what all that is. But see, that's the big blue for you guys. I mean, I can almost illuminate the whole car. Let me see if I get back over there with it. We only found one vehicle, but we could plainly see it was a car and not the 2003 Ford F-150 we needed to see on the Hummingbird sonar. We agreed to return the following day to at least clear the car, potentially to help another family in need of answers. On Friday, returning to Penny Creek, the tide was going out and it was too shallow to launch our boat. We did send the drone up, but the car was just deep enough that we couldn't see it. We chose to search our next location Willtown Bluff Landing. We knew, even in low tide, the location was deep enough. Where are we at? We are at Willtown Boat Landing right now. <clears throat> we are searching this area for Lamar 
because currently right now with the tide, it's low, so we can't put in at Penny Creek. It's deep enough that it's still covering the car, but shallow enough that we can't get to it. So we're gonna search this area right now because this, even in low tide, is still 10 to 13 feet, so. Why haven't you put me in the water yet? Because I wanted you to sit out here and bake. We searched the boat ramp area and off to the left, finding only what appeared to be crab traps and a furnace. We shifted direction and began to sonar the shoreline to the right of the ramp. After 30 minutes or so, it was there, a flashy object with no real structure. We realized what was just revealed to us, a larger vehicle matching the dimensions that had not been in the water for a month or two. Right there, upside down. Right there, upside down. It's not, I can't see it very well on here because. See it? That right there? I mean, I see what you're. Yeah, so you got tire, 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 inside. Okay, the vehicle right there. It's a bigger, it's a bigger vehicle, Lindsay. It's seven to fifteen. Look, look at how it's seven to fifteen. You see fifteen, you see ten, and how it's laid back on his back. It's a big vehicle. How could it have caught all wheel? Oh, high tide or low tide? You see how strong that current is? You'll see it here in a second. We'll go right back over it. All right, so we're definitely going to have to start getting the um, the Mega Live ready with the Sniper Marine Pole. There it is, right there. There it is. I told you there was a truck in here. All right, so it came off of there, floated down here, and here shortly we'll be able to bring it up. We're gonna drop the live scope down or the mega live. Should see it pop up. It's 18 feet deep. For not being a for being a, a what do you call it? A a tide. There it is right there. I, I can't stay on it, so. We began to check and recheck. Oh wow. 32 to 16 is what? 16. Huh? 16. Okay. It's just past 16. So, that stump, not the weeds, but the stump that's coming out of the water, it's right in front of it. Right about in there is where. Okay, well, I'll drop anchor here shortly. And so we can get a good good look at it. That's it right there, isn't it? Whatever it is, hasn't been there very long. I'll promise you that. There's the wheels. You have a spoke rims? I Huh? I may be wrong. From what I understand on sonar, this vehicle has not been in the water for over a year. And the reason why, you see how it looks. Let me see if I can bring this up, go like this. So, let me see if I can get this in here. And this may be a car or maybe a truck. Do you see how iridescent it is? Shows flashy. It's on its side, uh, kind of laid up on I the think it's on at its an angle. Side, like a little bit more towards the roof. So I'm gonna say that. Obviously, I don't know which way it's facing, so I can't. 
looks like on screen. See that? That's a heavy duty tire. See the tire? Lay on its side, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's on its side. Like, I think this is the, this would be the top, so I think it's kind of a little bit of a slant. Finally placing our marker on it, we headed to shore so Jacob could prepare to dive. Unfortunately, a coastal storm began to roll in and we had to call the dive for safety reasons. All right guys, so today is super low tide. If y'all remember, this was in the water. All of this was in the water that stick way over there to the low tide. So let's hope we can bring them home. Saturday morning, we spoke with Ethel and let her know what we had found and what our plan was. We returned to Willtown Bluff, found our target and marked it again. Is that, is that it right there? Sorry. Go ahead and throw the anchor out in front. Okay, you're all, I, I, I see where you're on now. You're on the back of the truck, okay. Because I'm, I'm on, on the whatever hit first. Uh, well, I understand that, but uh, what I'm telling you is I'm on the front. Uh, the water level. So that's how much tide has gone down. We're still 14 feet deep then. And there it is. Holy Toledo. Even more certain of what we were looking at this time. This is at least six feet shallower than what we were on here yesterday. Oh, the, the tide has definitely gone out. It's, it's a good thing in the sense of, you know, you diving. So I don't get eaten by sharks? Well, they still only need ankle deep water, so. Oh, okay. I'm not going to rule that out. Um, but it's, it's going to be a little bit easier, you know, depth wise and that thing. I don't know how the clarity is. It looks not. <laughs> the clarity it looks is not good. <laughs> the, the, the clarity is not. That's exactly what the clarity is. Um, it ain't not clear, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just really hoping that. I always try to... Holy, what the... That was a big something. That was a real big something. Did you just catch that or... What was that? That's reassuring. Maybe it was a dolphin. You said you wanted to swim with the dolphins today, so. Maybe, maybe not. I'm gonna go with it was a dolphin. I'm okay with it if it was a dolphin. I, I, I really don't think it was a dolphin, Lindsay. I'm going with it was a dolphin. It was a baby dolphin. Oh, okay. All right, so now what now? You, you, um, were, you, you were talking about? Yeah, so with what we saw yesterday, Going back to the campsite last night, literally pouring over every single image we had, the videos we had, it definitely made me, I don't want to use the word excited, but it, it definitely made me a little more hopeful than I, than I like to be going into this. I always try to just, it's just another dive. 
um, but looking at everything, everything does tend to match up. So even if this isn't his, I, I still think it's a truck. Um, I'm just really hoping that when we make that phone call to Ethel later, it's, well, it's, it's sad that if it is him, that he's no longer with us. Um, I'm still appreciative to be able to give her some kind of answers. So. Um, when she says she thinks it's a truck, I explained on the sonar, she's seen the sonar, she knows how to read it. But while looking at some of the sonar pictures, and I'll put a picture up here on the left or right or wherever, somewhere up here. If you actually look at it, you'll see a line going across, like a square going across. And you're going to see like a dark area, but you're going to see the whole vehicle. From what I can see and what I believe, I believe that we're getting a side angle of the tailgate, which you can't really see due to the fact that, due to the fact that it's like, let's say, let's say this was the, the, the cab of the truck. Let's say this was the tailgate, the, the bed. Flip it over, flip it this way. It's exactly how the truck is sitting. From here, you could see an opening, a square up here and an opening down here. It's hollow, so it makes me think that that is a truck bed, and I don't see anything this way. On top of here, we see it laying on the side, so. All right, guys, in just a matter of an hour or so. less than an hour, it's back to where we dove on it last time, wasn't it? Yeah. Or that we searched it. Crazy. Um, we got a storm behind us. We're gonna dive this real quick and get it over with. Come up to it. I'm just gonna slowly come up to it, raise it up, clip it on, and then we'll uh, we'll be set. Again, Jacob dressed and prepared to dive. After a quick rainfall, we were on the water. Jacob jumped into the water and realized what he was up against. Oh, this oh, yeah. oh, yeah. bye -bye. The tide was moving in quickly and the current was rushing, along with the marine life that inhabited the area that we were not accustomed to. As quickly and safely as possible, he made his way to the truck. He was tossed around between the eddy and the current. He was finally able to gain some leverage, orientate himself on the vehicle, and locate the plates. Oh, this car is strong. Oh, shit. Where are you going?
Even with his dive light, the dark waters made it impossible to see the tag number. He rose to the surface and placed the plate on the boat. He was able to know it was the correct plate without us even speaking to each other. We found him. Let's uh, let's get you out of the water. I could, huh? So let's get you out of the water. We found him. Huh? Throw the ladder down. It's kind of strong. Oh. Uh. That was the quickest dive I've ever done. Well, let's get out. I found the last plate and I ripped it off. Okay? You have a I didn't check the inside of it. A general idea of how it's, it's situated? It's, it's upside down, okay. exactly how I explained it. Okay. Um, I didn't touch the ground, so it's up in the air. And you know that void I was talking about? Yeah. I explained exactly how that truck is sitting. Are you ready for me to unhook this? Uh, not right now. Okay. Let me uh, get this ladder up, and then I'll get to start the motor. I can't believe we, whoo, I didn't even know that exported like that. I can't believe we found him, Lindsay. Yeah, actually I can, but we did it again. Uh, we're gonna have to wait till either it goes out or comes in. Is that right? Yeah, oh, that's why you said let's get out. Oh, all right. Pull that. Unhook. Uh, all right. All right, good job. Getting him out of the water as it sank in, we began to mentally prepare ourselves for the task ahead, notifying law enforcement and Lamar's family. Charleston County Sheriff's Office arrived on scene and gathered a quick overview of what had taken place. As the chain of command arrived, they too took notes. It was planned that their dive team would come and remove the vehicle. They spoke briefly with Jacob about how the vehicle was situated, and we offered them our footage as well. Unfortunately, we were unable to be present while the truck was removed from the water. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It's because of you guys that we're able to do this and bring home family members of the lost. So thank you again for all your support. Thank you, Elite Towing. But you, I'm gonna let Lindsay explain what it's like to not be able to be out on this scene to see it through. So it's very often that the family can't be present or doesn't want to be present. Us being there is that presence for the family. Um, it's our way of showing support for the family when they can't be there. It's also us, us seeing it through. It's us being a voice for the voiceless. So when you put in this kind of time and this kind of effort to help a family be able to lay their loved one to rest properly and not not being able to to see it to its you know start to finish start to finish it's it's incredibly frustrating it's incredibly heartbreaking um, I just I hope we don't ever have to experience this again 
We did stay on scene until it was taken to Charleston County Sheriff's Office where a thorough investigation is to be done and the remains in the vehicle were taken to the coroner's office where confirmation came a day later that it was Thelonious Lamar Green. We want to thank the Charleston County Sheriff's Office, Charleston County Underwater Recovery Team, and the Charleston County Marine Unit for their efforts and working with us in the following days. Our biggest debt of gratitude goes to the Green family for trusting us with this most delicate matter. Our sincerest condolences as they begin their healing process.